I was 18 when my family and I first left the islands. And though I had many years to rehearse, dreaming of maps and mountain passes, I was woefully unprepared. We taxied out onto the runway and after an ominous pause, burst into acceleration, pinning me to the chair and the ground fell away as if we were pouring into a chasm and we were suddenly somehow aloft. And as the plane turned to correct its direction, the whole world in which my life had previously rested tilted precariously on its axis. After a few hours of artificial normality, we descended through an ocean of clouds and found ourselves in another world. We stayed at first along the coast, but as the days passed, our courage grew until one morning we took the train into the city. I could scarcely believe what we found there a melting cathedral, dragons prizing themselves free of the architecture, a vast computer filling an entire chapel, a fountain of quicksilver, and a mountain on top of which the devil had, so they said, offered Christ all the kingdoms of the earth. There were other smaller surprises that were perhaps more profound. The sight of tall buildings that were not spires or watchtowers, the sight of young people gathering at dusk on the steps without being chased or interrogated. The sight of shop windows, dazzling at night, with no shutters and no fear that someone would throw a brick or drive a car through them. How could this be? At some point in the day, my mother and sister drifted off in one direction and I followed my father into a gallery. It was full of modern art, though most of its contents were a century old. My father was a strong, silent type, and though I really rarely doubted that he loved us in his own distant fashion, walking through that museum was the one time in my life I can remember him being enthusiastic at showing me things. This place was like a cave of impossible forbidden treasures. You entered each room through a curtain, and what you found was beyond any cabinet of curiosities or pleasure palace. These were not mere things, they were pathways. I returned home after our trip, but home no longer looked or felt the same. It was no longer enough. And so I set off. It's only at a distance of 20 years, the distance of tens of thousands of miles, the distance of having a child myself, and no father, that I can see what happened. I can see the gift that he gave me that day. My father showed me a glimpse of the world, knowing that it would in all likelihood cause me to leave and never entirely come back. And yet in what I can only construe as an act of love, he showed me anyway.